Welcome back, everybody, to the world's worst fishing. I'm Chris Jones, and I uh, just kind of wanted to start this video off um, just kind of showing I had a few shirts made. Um, so I'm excited. I'm trying to, um, you know, look a little more official on camera and try to brand my content best I can. Um, so, yeah, had a few, uh, had a few t-shirts made and uh, pretty excited. Going to try to wear these out fishing a lot. Uh, wear them, you know, in, in all the bait videos and um, might even have like a jersey made, um, you know, just with some of my stuff on it, the Land is the Limit uh, logo as well as this. Um, so, yeah, exciting things. Um, you know, just a t-shirt can be exciting sometimes. So I basically just had six or seven of the same shirt made. I have a couple of uh, um, XLs, larges, two XLs. I uh, basically I did I did two or three for me. In fact, there's one that isn't here. Um, I did two for my dad, and then two for Big Bird, and then I'm gonna get some made for uh, Avery, uh, Simple Jack. So um, um, let me let me know what you guys think. Um, I've I've made a few posts so far about the shirts and had a few people inquire about how to buy them. Um, so I think what we're going to do is my wife. Um, my wife and her mom, they, uh, they also have a small business like me. Um, they do this kind of thing. They do like monogramming and personalized gifts, a lot of which are shirt related. Um, so we'll probably just build a link to her website to where you can buy these shirts and then uh, she'll take care of the orders that way. I don't have to. Um, but uh, yeah, got some World's Worst Fishing shirts and I'm pretty excited about it. So I've been wanting to do a uh, rainbow trout uh, bait, like a rainbow trout pattern. And this is just the prettiest picture that I've, uh, sorry, I had to scratch my nose, that I've been able to find. So I think I'm gonna try this maybe on the Bloodline swim bait uh, here soon. Maybe not this video, but um, this is definitely coming down the pipe. I feel like I can take the Bloodline swim bait and absolutely nail this kind of a look down um which uh which i know is a popular color um you know there's a lot of people doing um uh trout pattern uh baits so um be on the lookout for that soon what's happening everybody we're back uh so it's friday afternoon just got off work and i'm um, headed to the house and uh think I'm gonna try this rainbow trout color all right welcome back everybody so we have a couple things laid out here we have the four inch, uh, excuse me the five inch bloodline swim bait the four inch bloodline swim bait and then we have each corresponding mold for the actual lines that the inserts the bloodlines themselves we have the two cups of plastic we're gonna actually shoot the colors in and then we have some over here that we're going to mix up the bloodlines for so we're gonna do the bloodlines first, get a nice kind of pinkish line um, like you would see on a rainbow trout. And um, we're gonna start that now. Okay, so we need a kind of pinkish bloodline. Um, so in order to get something like that, I'm going to obviously use pink. So I'm gonna to go to my trusty hot pink. And this is a very small amount of plastic. Um, so a little bit probably goes a long way and uh, as you can see that just kind of poured out of there not really sure what happened so um, but I want to cut it with some white pearl because I want I want it to kind of not just be straight pink because you know looking at pictures of the trout you know it's not just one solid color it's it's a little off color um, it's almost like a pink uh, cream almost I don't know how to pronounce uh, really say it but um, but I also wanted it to have a little bit of a pearlescent uh, look to it. So we're going to take this real quick, <clears throat> stir it up and see what we get. Got to make sure that our pearls are nice and stirred. Or, uh, excuse me, that the powders are nice and stirred. Okay. I kind of like that. So we're going to go with that. We're going to kind of tilt the cup slightly. 
Um, use extreme caution if you're doing it that way. It's just a little trick when you don't have a lot of plastic in your cup. All right. Here's the blood line for the uh, five inch. Okay. And here's the blood line for the four inch. Hopefully that worked. Plastic was getting feeling a little cold or a little, little cool there, but uh, that should work. And we'll meet you back in a minute. Okay, here are the uh, five inch, uh, the blood lines for the five inch version. Didn't quite fill out, but that's okay. These molds were a little cold, and uh, plastic was starting to set up, but that looks really good. When you see it in person, you can tell that there's that white pearl in it that just kind of offsets it from being just straight pink. Um, so I think those are gonna, I think those are gonna work quite well. Okay, and here are the smaller blood lines for the four inch. Looks like all of them filled in. So those are looking good. We're gonna set those aside. And uh, then we're gonna work on the two main colors of the bait. It's gonna be a laminate. And uh, I can't wait to see how these turn out. All right, so I'm looking at this example and we have like an olive green top um, with these big black dots. And then you'll see these little kind of gold dots. So we're gonna use big black flake and a little bit of small gold flake and we're going to blend like a watermelon with a little bit of chartreuse pearl for the top color and uh, see how that comes out. And in the bottom, you can kind of see it fades to more of a whitish color. Um, so we're going to use a white pearl, um, but we're going to offset it with something. I haven't figured out what I'm going to use yet because obviously it's not straight white. You know, if I look at this other picture down here, it's a little blurred. You know, this is a much lighter color fish in general. There's a lot less color distinction. Um, but, you know, this is just such a pretty example. Um, this was kind of the one that inspired me to do it. All right, so uh, before we prepare the molds, we're going to go ahead and mix up the color. Um, so I'm going to take my favorite, one of my favorite colors, MF Dark Watermelon. And this stuff is real light. What I mean by that is uh, it's real translucent. You can... You can dump this whole thing in there and you'll still be able to see through the bait, which I really like that um, when, uh, when, when I'm thinking about this color in my head. I don't really know how to say it, but like this has the look in my head, that's perfect for it. <laughs> um, that's all I can say about that. And then we're going to add a little bit of green chartreuse pearl, and I mean just a little bit. Just a little bit. So that's like a fraction of a quarter of a teaspoon. And uh, you know, I may troubleshoot this quite a bit, but I'm gonna put large black flake into this side of things. So I want it to, um, you know, be see-through enough that you can really see that flake. Um, okay, yeah, we have like a nice little kind of olive green mix going. Yeah, that's actually looking I like to sometimes put some on the table just to see what it looks like um, <laughs> like that. That's actually looking pretty nice. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and add the flake just because I want to see what this is going to look like. So this is the uh, .062 size and you'll notice that that trout, if I pull up that picture, you know, he has all these big black spots on the top side. And, uh, you know, the best way to get that without doing some, you know, hand painting or anything like that is just to add some flake to it. So, those are our big trout spots. And uh, I have to say, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing this now. That's, that's, that's kind of promising. In fact, it actually needs a little bit more black flake, in my opinion. So, I'll add a little more there and stir it in. All right. And uh, for now, we'll stop there with that side, and we'll work on the bottom side. Okay, so the bottom side is going to be white pearl base. So we're going to do about, yeah, a little over half of a quarter teaspoon. I don't want to overdo it. And what we're going to do is, because there's a pink theme to these uh, rainbow trout and everything, we're going to use a violet, which is kind of pink, highlight powder 
to give that bottom side a little bit of a pink uh, hint to kind of go along with the pink theme of the rainbow trout. So um, we're going to basically blend those two powders together and that's going to be what we're going to do for the bottom side or, or excuse me the, the bottom half. Um, you know, this is my first time ever trying to make a rainbow trout color, so um, this is my raw first attempt. And um, hopefully we'll get something that looks that looks good here. So anyway, we'll stir that in. I think it needs a little more highlight because I really want it to be noticeable, at least in person. Now some of this stuff is really hard to get across on camera. But looking at this in person, I really want it to, to come across that, you know, the, the pink hue of the bottom half is um, there to kind of uh, go along with and complement the, the pink bloodlines. So um, we are going to stop there probably, and uh, we're going to go ahead and prepare the molds. And real quick, I almost forgot, I'm going to add a little bit of gold flake to this top side simply because um, the example that I had there were little gold flakes well well not gold flakes but gold spots in the top side so that's going to be our uh, top color right there all right so if I look at this fish he has a lot of gold in his eye he's a golden eye big James Bond fan so I'm also going to use gold eyes and I think that will um, also kind of uh, match up so to speak with the uh, small gold flake in the uh, top half so um, I've already got my spray adhesive dabbed into the eye sockets and uh, we're just going to take these little gold eyes here and put them in so uh, that's what the mold looks like and um, oops and we are almost ready for the baits I mean, uh, excuse me, for, for the actual uh, shoot. Okay, everybody, we have uh, top color, bottom color, and uh, the way that these molds are laid out, we have our top on this side, our bottom on this side. Um, so you kind of, you do these molds kind of in line. Uh, instead of doing the blending block that way, we, we actually do it in line. And um, I've always thought that was kind of neat. So anyway... Uh, both of these are at about 330 degrees. I've just had better success with this mold shooting at a little bit lower temps, so here we go. Alright. Shoot slow and hold some pressure. Alright. That felt pretty good. Now we'll come way over here and do one of the 4 inch. We'll kind of stagnate but or uh not stagnate we'll jump between i don't even know what i was trying to say we'll jump between molds just to make sure that we get some good shots of each in case uh the plastic sets up i don't want to do just the five inch and then get all the way over here to the four and then my plastic gets cold on me so um anyway we'll kind of jump around a little bit and just see what we can get and uh this is kind of um Kind of similar to like a watermelon red pearl in a way just the kind of watermelon top um and then the uh pearl bottom you know just obviously a lot of different things going on so that should be all of them okay and uh hopefully we got something that will turn out good we'll see fingers crossed quick drum roll on the actual practice pad today Let's see if we got anything good, folks. Okay, moment of truth. We're gonna start with the uh, uh, with the five inch. I'm just a little more familiar with that. Hey, not bad. Let's take one out and really, really check this thing out. Well, does that look rainbow troutish to y'all? I had a little bit of flashing, but uh, that's okay. You know, that's not half bad. Let's take out another one. The trick when laminating a uh, pearl with a non-pearl 
is that the pearl tends to uh, bleed over a little bit. So I had to try and not get that. That's not bad. Let me, uh, let's get the third one out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, see, I had a little bit of pearl bleed over on that side and, uh, and on the top on that one, but that's okay. Those don't look bad. Let's, uh, get out the, uh, the picture again, huh? <laughs> yeah, so we have, you know, I could have gone, so, you know, this, this fish, he has a lot of red and orange in his gill plate there, but the actual line is, is more pink, and, uh, you know, that's really not bad for, for not actually, like, hand painting a bait, and that's one of the great things about this Bloodline swim bait, is it allows you to get, you know, these multicolor effects without having to get out the brush and, and paints or the airbrush or whatever. Um, let's look at the four inch and see how we did on those. Okay, and here is the four inch. Heck yeah. There it is, guys. And what do you know, it looks just like the color in the five inch. <laughs> awesome. That is a cool, cool bait. There it is. Oh, uh, you know, I messed up the tail on that one. Let's get one where the where the tail uh, is looking fresh. Yeah, there we go. Booyah. What do you guys think? I really like the gold flake that I put in it. Um, it just kind of, it looks more like the example that I was going for. And um, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty hot. I like that. So I wound up kind of getting something a little closer to this trout over here. This one just doesn't have the um, the gold in the top, but uh, any, e either way, uh, I'm actually really happy with these. Um, I know I've said that a few times, but uh, not bad for my first try. You know, I'm sure, you know, if you, you know, dedicated a couple hours, you could really dial something in, you know, and the thing about matching, you know, natural forage or, or trout or other species of game fish is that, you know, there's so much variety. One trout doesn't look like another trout. One bass doesn't look like another bass. Um, you know, so you just try to capture the general color scheme. And um, I think that's what we've done today. And um, that's pretty awesome. And uh, I'm thankful to have a mold that allows me to do that. All right, guys, gotta make sure I'm in the frame. I have this little remote control that came with my camera that, um, you know, you can, you can see what's in your frame without having to be behind the camera. And uh, I think that's really cool. So. Um, but yeah, there are the rainbow trout and uh, I'm loving it. So I'm going to hang on to these. These might be some future giveaway baits. Um, so if you, uh, if you like the rainbow trout swim baits, um, definitely keep watching the channel because these might pop up in a uh, future giveaway. I'm known, to, I'm known to do some giveaways. So, uh, and in fact, we're at about 8,500 or 8,400 uh, subscribers. Um, so I'm hoping we can get to 10,000 and when we do, I'll, uh, I'll do like a big giveaway, just hundreds of worms or something. But, uh, anyway, um, there's one take on rainbow trout. I'm sure there's a hundred more, but, uh, that one's not bad. So, uh, I, I love it when it works out the first time. That was my first time ever trying it. And, uh, you know, I, I grew up fishing in the, uh, great smoky mountains. Uh, uh, my dad and I, we, we would go with my grandparents up there and uh, stay for a week and um, we would hike way up the mountains fishing these little narrow streams you know coming through the Appalachian Mountains and um, fishing for these and, and other species of trout was one of our favorite things what's up so anyway guys um, had to stop and talk to my wife real quick but uh, thanks for watching the video please shoot me a comment down below as always let me know how you think I did Chris those are great Chris those really suck uh, let me know and um, Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you next time.